Thank you. So um, I hope you didn't come really to find out who the winners and losers are going to be. That that is way above my predictive uh, capabilities. Um, as uh, as was mentioned, my focus is on on emerging markets. So I'll uh, I won't spend too much time on um, on what's going on in developed markets. Just a brief introduction uh, to Frontier Investments Group. We invest in uh, in companies that that um, expand financial inclusion in uh, Latin America, Africa, and, um, and Asia, principally India. Um, we uh, principally focus on companies that are leveraging technology to expand, uh, expand financial services. Uh, we invest in early growth companies uh, that are generating some revenue, one to five million dollar investments. Uh, we are sponsored by Acción International, which is a global leader in microfinance. It's been around for 50 years, is present in uh, some 17 countries has invested over its history in some 63 microfinance institutions um, and has hubs in six countries around the globe. We leverage that presence, leverage that expertise in bringing financial services to the end and underbanked. Um, but our mandate is to go beyond microfinance and to invest in companies that are, that are expanding financial inclusion in, uh, in innovative ways. Um, so let me, um, let me talk briefly about uh, uh, about investments in, uh, in in payments in general and in mobile payments, um, as, as as was mentioned, massive investments in, uh, in in payments and the investments in payments over the past few years um, have increased at a very rapid pace. Over 1.2 billion dollars were invested in 2013, which was about a six percent increase over over 2012. And mobile is a major driver, and some very large transactions. Um, were, uh, were were announced in 2003 in the uh, in, in the mobile space. It is, however, still you know early days for uh, for mobile, despite the fact that a lot of money has gone into this. Some projects that have received a lot of money have uh, have, have have folded. But it's it's still too early, and again beyond my, my abilities to predict uh, uh, winners and losers. But it does often feel that you that we have uh, solutions that are in search of a problem. Um, and a lot of experimentation without a lot of take up, without a lot of, uh, of, of utilization. We touched, I, I think, in, in some of the previous sessions on what's going on in, uh, in, in developed markets, but clearly for consumers, um, in order to uh, have a, a, an offering that is going to have adoption and take up, it's about creating value. It's about um, having a, a, a product and a service that. Um, that uh, it is going to drive uh, utilization, going to drive uh, 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 some uh, benefit for the, uh, for the consumers. And it's all about convenience, control, providing them with incentives, enhancing the, custom, the, uh, the, the consumer experience. <coughs> There's a lot of focus now on creating value for merchants, and a number of, of uh, important deals have been announced in the mobile payment space in developed markets around creating value for, uh, for merchants. Merging, if you will, mobile payments and the, um, the shopping experience in, in retail, um, particularly on the restaurant side um, and, in, uh, and in, uh, in apparel. We see some very interesting um, innovations around marrying, if you will, um, the, the power of the, uh, of the mobile device um, uh, with the, uh, the, the reality that most people are walking, many people are walking into uh, these physical locations and seeking to, um, uh, to make that experience uh, better for the consumer, better for the retailer, reducing uh, reducing wait times at checkout, uh, mining data to give uh, the re the retailers more information about the, about their consumers. Exciting stuff happening there, uh, and we know that some of the greatest successes in developed markets have been around um, uh, private label closed loop solutions. We have here one of my very favorite apps, uh, Park Mobile, which is uh, um, uh, you know, it's a tremendous value for those of us that that live in larger cities. Um, I'm a great user of, uh, of, of Starbucks um, and, and some of those those apps. Uber, tremendous tremendous value out of uh, out of that application, which is a, a, a an application where the uh, the uh, the merchant controls the custom the consumer experience from from end to end, and payments is a part of that. But all of these are, are predicated upon building um, on existing uh, financial system, existing financial rails, and that brings me to emerging markets. Uh, which is my focus, and, and here the rails don't exist, and there's, that's where we, we've seen some of the most uh, innovative um, and most utilized uh, mobile money uh, uh, deployments and applications, precisely because it resolves, it solves a need uh, in a market that doesn't have today 
uh, any means of uh, and any platform for electronic payment. You know, a, a, a quick statistic: 2.5 billion dollars, billion people that are unbanked. 1.7 billion of which have mobile phones. So they have the means for electronic payment in their hands. It's about tapping that. And these poor market, these poorer markets are are, are leapfrogging direct, directly to uh, mobile money. However, from a VC perspective, um, we've talked about the, the, the challenges and the capital required to build a, this ecosystem. It's tremendous. Getting to scale is very challenging. And for those of us that are, are in the VC space, to participate in that ecosystem building is perhaps something better left to the MNOs and to the banks that are, are uh, spending a, a lot of money and for whom um, uh, this is uh, core to the long-term long -term strategy. What we've seen in, in some of the mobile money, um, uh, successful mobile money deployments, um, are some key takeaways. One, they're solving real problems. Um, they're solving the problem of, of uh, uh, transfers between cities and towns in countries like Kenya, where previously it was uh, a, a very, very high friction kind of transaction. This eliminates that, 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 that friction, lowers the cost, uh, it gives convenience to the consumer, and it's led to very rapid adoption. Calibrating network growth has been critical. You need, you need a network for uh, consumers to be able to use their mobile wallets. Uh, at the same time, you need, uh, you need agents and merchants uh, to be profitable. You need to drive transactions over those networks. So calibrating that, that network growth has been uh, a, a very important uh, feature of those more successful uh, mobile money uh, implementations. Third, uh, trust is critical which is why I think uh, a, a small player trying to uh, create a mobile wallet solution uh, without the, uh, the backing of, an, uh, of a mobile operator uh, or of a bank is, is very difficult. And finally, um, we've seen that this truly is a gateway to other services. Um, and it's a gateway to other services like, uh, like savings. Um, we see this in, in, in Kenya where uh, uh, M-Pesa has now launched a, a, a savings product which has had remarkable take-up. Uh, Microinsurance has been um, uh, a, a, an important feature in a lot of these more successful implementations. But this isn't just as an add-on for, for revenues. This actually has been key to profitability for uh, a number of the banks and MNOs that have, uh, that have launched these services. So where does this, where does this leave me as a, as a VC looking at, at, uh, at opportunities in, in emerging markets? Um, what, I, what I find compelling and exciting is uh, that these, these this infrastructure, these platforms are being created. Um, that uh, that el electronic payments are now possible in markets where previously, just five years ago, uh, almost everything was being done in cash. So what gets me excited are those companies that are building on top of those rails, building on top of that infrastructure, and creating new businesses um, that, uh, that are payment enabled um, and that uh, previously simply weren't possible. Pay as you go is is, is a, a key uh, a key example of this, or perhaps this is the payment enabled product and service um, that uh, that is is, is uh, uh, that we're seeing in some of these markets, and it's attracting some capital. So by pay as you go, I'm referring to companies like uh, Mcopa in Kenya uh, that is uh, selling solar lamps today. Um, and is uh, allowing consumers to buy that over a, a 12 to 24 month period, um, and they're, they're paying as they go. They're using the payment system, they're using M-Pesa, and they're providing now people with a, a, a valuable product that allows them, by the way, to charge their mobile phone, um, uh, and, and provides them with, uh, with lighting, and is providing them uh, with, with this piece of equipment that previously they would have had to pay up front for. Another example is, uh, is uh, pay-as-you-go electricity. So you have uh, some very, in, in, very large-scale deployments in, uh, in a number of emerging markets, uh, allowing um, the uh, large distributors to, uh, to deploy electricity into very low-income sec uh, uh, sectors and have consumers paying as you go. Um, there, there are any number of uh, products and services that are now being enabled uh, by these payment services. Second are uh, agent and merchant network management. Managing the network, uh, managing the agents, uh, qualifying them, training them, um, and, and then driving transaction volume 
across those agent networks and innovating around uh, new products and services that will make um, the, uh, the, the agent network itself profitable. That, that we see as, a, as, as a very interesting area of, uh, of investment and we've made some investments in this space. Related to this are what I would call agent emergent services and actually Andy touched on some of this. Some of this relates to using these, these uh, agent networks to, to uh, um, gather information about intelligence about the merchants and the agents themselves and provide them with, uh, with, uh, uh, with working capital loans, with uh, uh, supply chain payment uh, solutions, uh, inventory management, customer, customer analytics. All of this is, uh, is, is, is a reality and is um, uh, something that we're, uh, we're, we're quite excited about. We just invested in a, um, uh, an online remittances company out of the UK, similar to Zoom in the, in the US, focused on the, uh, on the European market, that is uh, leveraging social, social media, social networks, um, and is, is now experimenting with um, uh, inter international remittances into mobile wallets. And that, I think, is, is also a very exciting um, uh, opportunity for us as, uh, as investors, and one that gives real value to consumers by, uh, by dramatically lowering the cost, lowering the friction of, uh, of, uh, of, of money transfers. Not only by lowering the cost of, uh, of the money in, in developed countries where the money is coming from, but, but uh, lowering the cost and, and uh, eliminating friction for the money out, or for the reception, through mobile wallets of the underbanked under in, uh, in, in target markets. And finally, I, I think, as, uh, as Andy has mentioned, there's, there's a lot of opportunity around the, uh, the, the back end. Um, uh, many of these, these markets have multiple mobile operators, multiple banks uh, participating, and the settlement, the switching, the, uh, the, the gateways enabling online retailers to be able to accept uh, mobile wallets, those are also areas of opportunity. Um, but again, in conclusion, I, 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 would, uh, I would say that we as, a, as, as venture investors at an earlier stage um, are really looking at the opportunities and the innovation that's unleashed by um, the success of, uh, of mobile wallet implementations in a lot of these markets. And that, I think, uh, is, um, uh, is, for me, the real story. Because uh, creating these infrastructures is only the beginning, and it's going to radically change the face of commerce in these, uh, in these countries.